Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter four talking about mobile application platforms, tools, and environment. And continuing ahead with the next topic, which is 4.4, setting up a test lab. When it comes to mobile application testing, it's more of like important for anyone to understand that what sort of lab requirements will we have in order to connect and test the applicable apps before we release it into the market. So setting up a test lab would be very important and crucial because sometimes it can be expensive enough to set it up. And at the same time, it should be, uh, you know, considering all the factors which you really need at that point of time to test the apps in order to make sure that it behaves as expected. So with an on-premise, the very first thing we are talking about is on-premise lab, which is generally a little expensive, but we need to understand what could be the benefits and drawbacks of the same. When an on-premise lab, all the devices, emulators, uh, and simulators are located on site. This is more of like, you know, having your own infrastructure, setting up everything and having every equipment right at your place. Now device selection can be done on the basis of various factors such as rank of the device uh, as found on the Google or other analytics, operating systems and their versions, screen dimensions and density, availability and cost, special features and importance in the target audience. On-premise lab advantages include the ability to devise, ability of device for specific proximity based testing and sensor specific aspects such as battery, touch and enhanced security. So you're going to get all sort of benefits what you actually need to replace a real time device when you have an on-premise lab, which will have all the sort of setup required done and you can definitely have everything in place and you can own it in order to run any of your mobile application tests at any point of time. Now setting up this type of lab may require large budgets depending on the devices to be procured and maintained from time to time. The additional challenges include timely availability and difficulties with testing in different locations and environments because you are limited to on-premise lab but when it goes to outside that then it will be of course not available at that point of time so we need to understand the various pros and cons when talking about the on-premise lab where the con is only one that it could be expensive and location will be a dependency Further to add, we are talking about uh, the remote test lab compared to the on-premise lab. Now, remote test labs are, of course, you know, not in your premises. You can host it, you can rent it for the time being in order to run your test. Now, these labs are important and helpful for testing when devices or network are not physically available on site. Now, remote device access, which is RDA, allows access via a network and uh, network connection to various devices hosted in the provider's data center. Now each potential RDA provider needs to be evaluated for compliance with the requirement, especially for the security because you will be trying to put all your concrete and detailed information in somebody else's premises. So you want to make sure that you, they have a great security policy and of course it is going to meet your expectations or not. For example, if you're uh, doing it for some of the specific testing like connection types, do they provide such services? Do they also host several device types which would be required by you to test your mobile application? Now some remote labs provide the following additional features which you can look forward to dedicated physical device versions they can have certainly a lot of devices available so you can just make use of them instead of buying them for your regular testing now generic devices for particular operating system and versions only a robotic arm for performing touch and gesture related operations virtual private network which is vpn connections to give access to the device cellular connections with various cellular network providers and automation tools and services. So there are a lot many other benefits which you achieve by going forward to a remote test lab. But at the same time, you need to make sure that does it fall under uh, the budget which you are having to allocate for such premises. Of course, it will be cheaper than the on-premise lab compared to the remote test lab. 
All right, so coming to the next, uh, some of the factors to keep be, to be kept in mind when using remote test labs include slow device responsiveness and limited options for interacting with dividers such as multi-touch and gesture. This can be cost effective for sporadic use, but is generally more expensive if used for extended period of time for a wide range of devices. Now, other factors include on-demand platform availability. That means you can pre-book it and make sure that you reserve a timeline so that you can conduct your private executions compared to the need to obtain access to missing devices in the local lab and scalability of the lab as it can grow and shrink as the project evolves. Now, test scenarios that include sensors such as NFC, Bluetooth, or battery consumptions are often hard to test in the cloud, which is required to be having a real-time interface or real devices. However, the different geographical locations for remote labs may help with tests that need network and GPS connection. So some of your cons or drawbacks of the on-premise lab can be overcome with help of the remote test labs. But again, at the same time, don't ignore the drawbacks and the risk involved in using a remote test lab. Now, a test lab can utilize either one or combination of the two approaches, depending on the type of test that need to be performed. So putting it all together, at any point of time, you need to evaluate all your factors which you need to consider, including the budget, in order to understand that what sort of lab would be required. Not again, a small-scale industry is recommended with on-premise labs. These are for the organization like Samsung, LG, and many other who directly make their own phones and they can host a you know, on-premise lab to allow people to utilize it as a remote test lab. But expanding again on these can be uh, quite expensive. So you don't really prefer to have your own premises. But if you are a well-established organization making quite often a lot of mobile applications, then you can certainly look forward to save your cost instead of moving it to somebody else's property. But at the same time, if you are just a quick startup and probably want to do some uh, limited test cases or limited test executions, then you can certainly rent the remote test labs and make use of it for your exercises and uh, activities which need to be performed. So this is where we were talking about understanding the labs and we really want everyone to be aware of these because this could be really crucial for a mobile tester to understand what type of lab and other things we are utilizing for our execution. Well, that was all from this particular tutorial team. And with that, we also complete the chapter four. We will be getting back to you with the sample questions on this. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.